Hello and welcome, my name is Fox Nine Tilt, and I'm at Fox, and the new season of Star Wars started, I just saw the movie, and before we start talking about it, because we have a lot to talk about, um, I need to get this spell right, um, Radiant Shadow Transform! Uh, I think this one is a little biased on what clothes it wants to make. Also, why bunny ears? Oh, one my name is Fox, and I tell Vega and I admit Fox. Some idiot in a dress talking about Star Wars. <laughs> but in any case, hello one, <laughs> the new season of Star Wars, The Force of Evil just started. I just saw the first, well, it's the, it, they call it a movie, but it's the first four episodes of the series, which you can kind of really tell it is. Um, where Star heads back home. And by God, I love this. I love this freaking um episode. Or movie and just give me one minute. Don't you love magic time travel? <laughs> but in any case, um, I have, as you can see here, a cr uh, let me look, let me raise the brightness on that. A crap ton of notes. It's a two-hour goddamn episode. Of course, I'm gonna have that many goddamn notes. But um, I'm not gonna go as I usually do when I do the entire thing. I'm probably not gonna talk about everything because again. By God, but the most of the, most of the episode, yeah, all most of this episode is pretty freaking good. This entire um, mo movie, um, basically, it continues. I think almost exactly when it last left off. Maybe a little bit. Maybe a couple days later. Um, Marco is basically still heartbroken or starstruck or whatever the fudge that Star's gone, and Star. And point to where one, he's downstairs eating oatmeal, and his parents come out with a nine iron. Mom's mom, the guy like the dad, dad's like, should we call the police? Like, no. And mom's like, no, give me the nine iron. I'm like, Jesus. Oh. But no, Marco's downstairs with one of the laser play puppies called Barco Diaz because, ha. Oh. And they go to try. Um, Marco is just basically. Wants to keep it ready, waiting for Star to come back, even though it looks like she's probably not going to come back. Um, and even Star is, like, staying watch, watching all of this. Can I put this in here? I don't think I can. Uh, <laughs> Star is watching... God dang it. Star is watching all this from her wand, because her... Because Star and the mom are on the run. They're, they're running away to this sanctuary that's apparently where they can revive the Grand Council. And Star is running scared. And that's the majority of this episode. She's running scared. And it's kind of... If you've seen... I think I predicted most of this. Uh, basically, they head to the star... They head to this sanctuary... This magical sanctuary where apparently this magical golden... This magical goo will heal the heal the High Council and they'll bring them back to life. But the thing is, along the way, magic starts slowly draining. Um, the magical path disappears. The Warnicorn disappears along with the magical cart which then turns to a hot wheel uh, uh what the fuck were they called radio flyer <laughs> or radio flyer but it says butterfly butterfly on it it's like ha <laughs> funny um and they basically run out the, ah, they run out of magic and they have to then head to the uh head to this magical 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 place but even when they actually get there which has glossaries everywhere it's not actually there's no, the magic in there is, for some reason, corrupted. It's black, gooey tar. And if it touched the High Council, who knows what the fuck would happen to them. So the Moon had to stop that. God dang, this is hot. <laughs> um, but Star, the Moon then goes saying that, where can we go? Basically, a lot of this is Moon trying to, you know, escape. And Moon says, well, Moon first says that they're going to stay before they try the magical black goo. Or after the black goo um, is shown and they lock it away. Moon says that they're going to stay in this place for as long as it takes till the situation changes. Star, of course, doesn't like this idea, saying, no, why Why don't we just go? Why don't we go fight Toffee? Why don't we go beat him, destroy him? And Moon's like, no, I, I can't because Toffee killed her mother. Toffee killed her mom. And also, I just noticed that Toffee's is a right-handed wand and the mine's the, a left-handed wand. <laughs> but, um... So Moon, so Moon then then it cuts the commercial and then we cut to the next episode, where it is a flashback to Moon's past, which I kind of wish, it felt kind of like just like immediate. I'm like, 
I don't know if you should have done that so soon. You probably should have saved that for a little bit later. I don't know. It just felt a little too... That was like one of my first little problems with this was that bit where it was like, cool, we get to see the past, but it's like, one, already, mom's dead. The mom's dead already, and all we really learned from this is that Moon basically goes to Eclipse Act. One, that Moon's not prepared to be queen, and everyone's taking it hard, especially Glossary, which I'm like, wow, Glossary has another emotion except a-hole. Who would have guessed? <laughs> so, Moon... Moon basically goes to talk with the one person that could probably help, Eclipse of the Dark, who is sealed away in the crystal, in the back of uh, Crystal Lores, whatever the fuck place. And he, she makes a deal with her, saying if Ecl if uh, Moon uses his magical spell, she'll or Eclipse will give her the magical spell. Eclipse will free her from, or that uh, Moon will allow Eclipse to free. That Moon will have to free Eclipsa. If Eclipsa gives Moon the spell, Moon has to free Eclipsa. But if Moon gets the spell, you then holding hands, you see in the trailer, them holding hands and the magic forming between both of them. But then, uh, oh, what is it, Crystal Lore? I forgot his name. Shoots a crystal, freezes Eclipsa again, and that dumb face where he's... <laughs> and basically then goes saying, well, yeah, well, yeah, I have to keep her frozen here for, you know, ever. And... But Moon goes to the grand, uh, goes to the massive army, the army of monsters that are right outside the door. The I probably didn't even talk about this. Basically, the monsters killed Moon's mom, and they're right outside the castle doors. They're ready to attack. Moon goes there. Moon goes, sits down, starts eating some food that River gave her, and just goes, "I'd like to speak to your general." And then one guy just goes. Here comes the general! And all I could think of was... This should be fun. Uh, and... By God, and, like, of course, the general is called the lizard. And I'm just thinking, that is dumb. <laughs> I'm like, there are multiple lizards here. Why on earth is that one lizard any different? Though I do love his introduction. He comes in, he goes, Hello, hello, queen. And he goes... You're you the one called Blizzard? Yes, but you can call me Toffee. That's not any better. <laughs> I was like, oh Jesus! At least they know it's a stupid name. Oh, um, but Moon says, "Get out of here, or I'm gonna kill you all." Basically, and Toffee's like, "No, don't you know what we are? We're immortal." And you see, one guy gets his arm. <laughs> Moon's like. Well, yeah, I know, but and one lizard's like, check this out. Oh, another lizard bites the other lizard's arm off, rips it off, arm forms, and it fist bumps his own hand. I'm just like, by God, you guys are broy stupid, aren't you? <laughs> These lizards should be going, dude, bro, like bro, 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 that queen, bro, bro. But um, in any case, uh, Moon then goes ahead and uses the magical spell, which God Lord, I'm not gonna freaking remember that quick. It's why two times they said it uh, but uses the magical spell uh, she the clips it says to aim for the heart she doesn't of course she aims upward and shoots off toffee's finger which then even shows that toffee tries to regrow the finger it grows black and then just falls off basically he can't regenerate this scares the crap out of everyone there all of the the lizards and monsters they all scatter, um, and basically that's how Moon saved Muni back then. It was just shoot off the finger, done and done. Also, and again, I am I'm going to skip over a lot of stuff because again, two hour episode. Uh, <laughs> and then basically that's where that ends. It's just Moon shoots off Toffee's finger. Um, not saying that's not a bad thing, but I'm just like, I feel like that should have been a little bit bigger. At least a little bit. But, what, what can they do? They were, I guess, no, they have two hours. They could have made this into an actual movie instead of separating it off. But in any case, um, Moon, that, Moon, or is it, uh, we then cut to, I believe right after that we cut to River. Where he's having a party every day until the town is basically dying. And it's just like, well... No, 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 no. After that, we followed um, Ludo, where Ludo is back. 
he wakes up and he has the crystal seahorse stuck in his right hand, and that's why I'm blowing up my left hand. Um, <laughs> crystal in his left hand and just go. What, what, what happened? Also, the bird and spider apparently learned how to order takeout. Or pick up. Um, but Toph, Ludo wakes up, and he's like, Wait, where, where's Glossark? Where's my wand? The wand? I have a wand hand. A wand hand? I don't, I, I don't want a wand hand. <laughs> but goes, finds Glossark, and Glossark says, and Ludo says, I, or Glossark says that he defeated the Grand Council or whatever. And... And Ludo's like, really? I defeated the Grand Council. I should write this in the book. And he should, he tries to write in the book. Doesn't work because apparently he's no longer the owner of the book. Because, of course, Toffee is now the new owner of the book. Though he doesn't know this. And basically most of this episode is just Ludo trying to write down stuff in it. Doesn't really work out until Ludo says, screw it. But he says, screw it and throws the book in a fire, and it just lights up on fire and just starts burning. And I'm just like, hold on a second. Are you telling me? We got the Necronomicon. The, this book, bound in flesh and bulk that brings animates the dead. Won't burn. We got, I think, the Darkhold from um, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I don't believe that can burn either, or be destroyed, at least from what I read about it. So that can't be destroyed either. There are a crap ton of magical books all throughout worlds, uh, stories, all throughout them that do not burn because they are a magical book with magical properties and they don't burn. But you're telling me the one magical book that is like that, that is not evil per se, except for maybe a chapter that you're telling me that book that is not evil, that has all the spells of the butterflies from past, present, and future. Well, past and present, at least not the future yet. Um, and also is bound by a magical deity, a magical god, Glossaric, who is apparently bound to this book. You're telling me this book doesn't have a fireproof spell on it? I am merely just saying. What idiot didn't put a fireproof spell on this? Come on! <laughs> like, all these bad guys are like, Yep, this evil book that could destroy the world? We're gonna put a fireproof spell on it, that way it doesn't burn. <laughs> no, this magical book that could save everyone, who has magical properties for each queen the next generation over, and, you know, in case someone, I don't know, one of those queens takes up smoking, I say lights, lights, an ember fall on it. Oh, no, 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 that thing's gonna burn up quick. But, yeah, the book burns. Toffee takes over again, because even, like, uh, Glossary was saying, so who am I talking to right now? But they start talk. but Toffee wakes up, and he's like, good, now, um, uh, what is it? Uh, Glossary says, oh, good, you got him to do what you want. He's like, no, 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 no. I merely told, I merely directed him in the right direction. You... I merely, he did that out of his own free will. But now without any distractions, well, he can go take uh, Muni Castle. And also, Glossaric, he's been this entire episode trying to make some kind of chocolate pudding ball that keeps either burning up or falling down. And then eventually he makes it, and of course, he burns up with the book, and it's like, well, dead. And I'm just like, well, that kind of sucks. I don't really feel too bad about it, but <laughs> I didn't really like Glossary to begin with, but yeah, that kind of sucked. Um, but so then Star, then, but then, uh, what is it? After that episode, if I remember correctly, that's when the river comes in. River is doing terrible as king. There's a giant Godzilla monster coming after him. And then Marco just cuts himself right in. So I'm like, okay, good. They remember he has dimensional scissors. Great. Uh, he comes in and like, hey, I brought up. These cookies are these cereal that Star likes, and everyone's and Rivers just destroying everything. Giant monsters coming. Marco basically gives them a pep talk, and they go. Uh, uh, River goes the brings up everyone like says like all their special skills that the city the city that hates him basically now brings up and says like all the special skills they have. And they're like, yeah, we can take them. None of their skills go into this battle because there's no battle. He goes up to the monster, goes, monster, get out of here, and the monster's like. You told me to come here. He's like, 
No. He's like, yeah, you were doing just Come here. No, I was going, go away. No, no, no. Come here. No, no, no. Go away. And I'm just like, you're both idiots. Um, the monster leaves. And everyone's like, yeah, hip, hip, hooray. Hip, hip, hooray. And the ending is just Ludo going, or, uh, talk, or, blah, 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 Ludo. Yeah, Ludo. Ludo going, hip, hip, hooray. He storms the place with the rats, takes over. The next episode, if I remember correctly, is Marco going through the, basically trying to escape to grab the key from Ludo to free moon, uh, or free river, because if not, river's going to be Levitatos into the sky. Which, FYI, the Levitatos spell is one of the most hilarious spells in this movie. Um, but Marco goes, um, finds, uh, goes through the uh, air ducts and finds a mime, who is probably one of the better characters in that th this trio, the jester who's, who hit her and Roberto, Fallout Boy, hate each other apparently. And those two just keep going at each other's throats, which is just freaking hilarious. And they're like, we don't... And then, like, Mars says that they should try to help. He's like, no, we are artists. We don't change the world by going into it. We just make commentary about it. I'm like, wow, you guys are a-holes. <laughs> oh. Except the mime. The mime apparently is a genius, what I find hilarious. Because every other story that has a mime in it, they always usually put mime below every other kind of artist. And it's just like, the mime is a genius mime. I'm just like, ha, ah, funny. But in any case, a genius. Uh, <laughs> Marco tries to get it. There's a whole bit where they try to get the key and they have to act like they're uh, magical. Uh, they're these pe they're the entertainers that entertain Ludo while trying to grab the key. Which also, there's actually a funny scene where um, Ludo's uh, trying to make everyone like him. The whole point is that he's trying to make River tell the people to like him. And River's like, I can't do that. <laughs> but um, he's also like selling merchandise, Ludo. And I freaking love the merchandise. It's just like, everyone's like, <laughs> the sales lady's literally trying to sell his merchandise. But everyone's just like, no. And he's like, you see what I'm working with? <laughs> And that part was just funny because the, like, the ladies were really trying to sell his stuff and it's just not working. I'm just like, that's that's kind of freaking hilarious in and of itself. But, um, but in any case, uh, Marco and them get the key. They go into River's cell, but River says, no, I can't leave my people for some reason. And Marco has to leave him. <laughs> uh, River gets taken to the front and Ludo basically says, tell that man. He goes, no. He goes, fine then. Let me talk this. Sends him into the sky. I'm like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> then, is it that in the next episode, Moon and Star, the dark magic is, like, bubbling out. They have to escape the Citadel. It gets closed in. And they have to find a sanctuary. Which they go to Buff Frog's place, where the kids apparently are grown up. Buff Frog doesn't know about having... Buff, Moon doesn't know about Buff Frog. Buff Frog doesn't know about Moon. And Star basically has to escape this place. And the Buff Frog is supposed to be um, his... Her, uh, uh, what the fudge is the word I'm looking for? Distraction. Uh, that's the word. Um, distraction. But, but the thing is, <laughs> they get into a heated battle of defend the castle where, or defend the muck, muck where the evil Mewman Queen has to destroy the babies before the, mu the, the, before the uh, monster uh, parent uh, can save them. And they get into an argument about monsters, and racism, and all that bullcrap. And then, only then when uh, Buff Frog goes, you know what? No, I understand about family and all that. That's why I'm not letting Mo uh, Star Butterfly leave. And so I was like, what? <laughs> and Bright Moon Star's about to leave. Well, uh, the just goes, you young lady, go to your room. They send her to her room. Uh, but Froggy Moon kind of have a connection a little bit. Also, my camera's probably going to die, so I'm probably going to have to stop this and come back in a second. So, be right back. Basically, where I left off was Moon and, Moon and Buff Frog have that little bonding moment. But uh, let me just go everything. Buff Frog, sends, Buff Frog and Moon send Star to the baby's room. But uh, the baby's apparently... One of the babies can talk, the small one with the big eyes. And says, yeah, uh, yeah, we can get we get to this secret passage where we used to go in the clubs. And I'm just like... Why? <laughs> Why do the babies know about clubs? But, um, Moon Star gets out. The babies say, what's your plan? Star says, I don't have a plan. <laughs> I don't have a plan. I'm just going to wing it. 
runs off, and the babies go, she's gonna die. <laughs> and right after that, Ludo is having a choir sing for him about how he's basically Ludo Moses in a picture, and then how he defeated the evil king, and history is written by the winners. Um, and Ludo's like, oh, good, good, good. Is that evil? What is that wand hand? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. He actually does this at one point. Uh-huh. Yeah, they were off key. Let it have us! <laughs> Sends them into the sky and she goes, they're, fl- they're singing with the angels now. <laughs> I'm just like, Jesus! <laughs> That's freaking hilarious and darn. They have a lot of good moments like that, especially Ludo. But when Ludo's going through an elevator, because apparently there is now plumbing or plumbing and electricity in Muni, um, as well as AC vents. But um, while he goes to the elevator, a, a, someone dressed up in a horrible rat costume takes the rat guards out, tries to grab Ludo, but cat, but and it turns out it's Star. Busts out, tries to grab the wand. Star is not using her wand because she kind of blew a hole inside of the sanctum because her magic's going all wonky wonky. Uh, Star is then captured, but then saved by Marco wearing a mouse costume because they have these costumes just everywhere, I guess, and his looks a lot better. Um. Uh, Save Star. The Resistance, as they're calling now the artists. Uh, they try, they're doing pulling pranks on Ludo, but it's not, of course, not really doing anything. Uh, but Star then, but they escape, of course. Star then goes off trying to fight Ludo. I'm trying to remember now. Sorry, I'm getting some things mixed up a bit. But Marco is captured. Ludo takes Star. And tries to make stars say, like, you know, to make them like him or whatever. Oh, no, he says, like, basically because of the hand. He doesn't want the wand hand anymore. And Star then is like, oh. And Star's like, oh, your hand's the wand. And then she gets to, like, oh, I, I know what I have to do. That Toffee's in the wand. wand and he's like, oh, I know what I have to do. And she casts the whispering spell on it. Where you see that hand die out. Um, Moon comes in with Buffrog. They save Marco. Leave the resistance there because F them because they were going to let Marco die at one point. Um, they go see Star on the other side of the building and Star goes, Hi, Mom. It's, it's too late. And go, Star, no! A giant explosion from the wand. L- uh, Ludo's fine, but Star's gone. Has no reason, idea why. And Ludo's also, well, he's not fine, but like, Star starts talking, and Star finds herself in this black void of goo, black goo. And she's like, what, what is this? You see an eye form out of it. You see the hands and claws start forming, and it's just, Toffee! And it's just like, punch! <laughs> I'm like, holy crap! And then, like, it ends for, a, like, a, a commercial. And I'm like, by lord, if you would have just ended it there, that would have been such a goddamn cliffhanger. But, um, Star's trying to talk to... Uh, Moon and everyone through Ludo how they are, but then suddenly like that gets cut off and Toffee says, I'm the one who we'll talk to her now, and he makes a deal that if uh, Moon gives Ludo back, or Toffee back his finger, he'll let he'll, uh, let Star go or something. And I like how he says, you know what I want. And he has the finger like cut off, and I'm like, that's freaking cool. It's like, like, he like, give it to me, but then also like, he's just showing that his finger is missing. Shut up! Uh, uh, if no one else heard the dog. Uh, but uh, Moon follows follows through with it, puts the finger on. Toffee reforms, hacks up Ludo, but Star's nowhere to be seen. The crystal in his, Toffee's hand, he just crushes it, drops it, and just starts walking away. Also, he forms with his suit. I'm just like, oh, I kind of. That would have been cool if he went, went back and just like put his suit on, like where he left it. But um, also, for some reason, his suit just forms then, so what? Uh, but. Toffee, Moon says, give me Star! And Toffee's like, no. <laughs> and Toffee's just like walking away. Like, Moon's trying to use the dark spell on on him. He just pushes her into like the ground. You see also Moon like, like this dark aura start creeping up over Moon's body. Um, Marco punches through Toffee's heart. And Toffee just, uh, just whips, just apparently whips, and they do it off scan. I was like, oh, that kind of sucks. Just whips him into a wall. It just starts walking away, and even Ludo goes saying, did, did, I, did I play any part in this? And Toffee goes, no. And just keeps walking away, and like, moves just on the verge of tears, crying. Even like, while Toffee's walking away, she's trying to re-piece back together the fragments of the wand, trying to see if that'll fix the wand. 
but as Toffee's walking away, and like they basically have nothing they can do, Star still in this black goo, which apparently Toffee says is her magic corrupted by him. But she sees a little light out in the distance. Keeps swimming to it, never reaches it, never reaches it. Sees it way down below, swims down to it, drowns apparently in the magic. Wakes up where there's the gumbo. Uh, wakes up in a black place where apparently no one's been. Glossary is there. Sorry if I'm rushing through this because we have a little bit of time and I know this episode's going way longer than it probably should. But um, Glossary there and just says, This is gonna need more salt. Shoves some food in it, shoves some food in her mouth. It's like, the gumbo, and he goes, no, and she goes, she sees the little dot in there and goes, this isn't goo- gumbo, this is magic, and Gloss like, no, don't start, it's hot! Glo- he, she reaches down, she digs in deep, just starts burning, like you see fire coming off of her, her cheek marks a little brighter, her hair goes up, and you just see her slowly pull down, like, pull out a small glimmer of pure magic, and just see the explosion happen, everyone's like, what? They all look up. A portal opens up, Star comes through, her wand transformed into, or the wand floats up, transformed into her new state as she comes through, turns into her own, um, her new Muni form, which is freaking awesome. She goes Super Saiyan. <laughs> There's no really other way to put that. She turns golden, she gets a super power upgrade, she turns Super Saiyan. <laughs> she turns Super Saiyan, blows up, uh, turn goes to Toffee, you see her ears, like the horns on her head turn to Atena's arms come out, she goes Super Saiyan, has a golden dress, her wand gets a new butterfly wings, points the wand at Toffee, and just blows him the fudge away. <laughs> but I was like, I hope this isn't the end for Toffee for one, but blows him the heck away, and soon as he blows, soon as she blows him away, uh, he like starts reforming, I guess he's like all gooey, he's like, and like one, everyone's like, "Star, you're back, and it's so good." And then Toffee just comes like, "No, I'm the one who plans this. I know what's coming next. You can't kill me." Or what? Is, what's the question? Was it? Uh, goddamn. Hold on. Uh, oh my god. Uh, Super Saiyan. Uh, I know what happens next. I'm the one that plans ahead! Giant Pillar falls on him, just smushes him apparently, and Luna just goes, <laughs> turns out you're dead. <laughs> um, everyone's happy, Star changes back to her regular form. Everyone's happy, but then while everyone's celebrating, Moon still has the black marks on her arm, and she goes, Eclipse up, runs off. Everyone's happy, um, the Eagles! The god dang eagles from Lord of the Rings up here suddenly and goes, Oh yes! A moon, river's riding on them and goes, Oh yes! I was living among the eagles and I became their king! This is my new queen! I'm like, well that's gonna be... You left your wife for an eagle wife. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but uh, they're all happy and Moon runs off to the crystal dimension or whatever, finds Eclipse still in the crystal goes, Walks away, and of course you see the crack in the crystal. And also, uh, Star throws Ludo back into the void because Ludo wants to go back to figure out some things. And then that's the end of the then that's the end of the episode. And I'm just like, or end of the episode is the crack on the crystal of Eclipse, and then just and then, God damn, this was good. Uh, this it had its it it was really good. The bit with River, it's kind of silly and stuff. And I guess yeah, but like the thing is, this really wasn't a movie. Like, let's put in um, Gargoyles, the first couple episodes, where it was literally a movie. It, it was basically a movie. I don't know if it's helping, like an hour-long movie. This, this wasn't really a movie. This was more, they just took the four episodes that were coming and just smushed them together. Not, the whole bit with, like, Toffee's mom dying, it really is just like, oh, just immediately flashback to it. It's, there's no really segue in there's nothing other than Toffee killed my mother and then just we have a flashback to that it's not Moon telling her side of the story or anything like that it's just boom mother is dead it's it's just it's just that it's, it's just a segue in uh, the whole bit with River singing and stuff like or not singing having her party is just that just River having a party until like really the ending bit, bit or when Marco just comes in just like Wait, why didn't Marco just chase after her then? Like, if anything, there's a cool picture on DeviantArt where, um... God damn, it's about to die again, isn't it? 
where I mean, uh, where uh, uh, like Marco, like the right the end of the next season, uh, Marco just like busts in, just just like just sees like them leaving. The Marco just goes, "I'm not letting her go." Runs up and just cuts the hole in the scissors, just jumps through. It's freaking awesome. Sorry, just doing that real quick. But um, yeah, this movie was good. I did like it. I really want to see more of a season three. Season three is gonna be we got a new one and everything. I kind of really want to see. Even like the uh, ending credits is pretty good. The music that comes from that, it's stoic and like very like Matt Sailor Moonish animeish, which I kind of really liked. But um, this was awesome. I really loved it, and I can't wait to see more. And it it looks like old enemies are coming back along with new ones. Speaking of old enemies, uh, wait, what the heck? Well. I keep these pillows here in case I ever get blown towards the window. <laughs> you thought you were rid of me, Foxer Nine Tailed. But after two long years, I have finally returned to this dimension to seek my revenge. Wait a minute. Two long years? Black clothing? Skull like mask? Reaper from Overwatch! Silence! I am no longer the one known as the Plague Doctor. But I said Reaper from Overwatch. Wow! Plague, it's been years! How you been? You look thinner. In 2D. And badly drawn. For I have now transcended because of the multi-dimensions I have visited. I am now Dr. Scullion! I actually wanted to ask, are you actually a doctor, or is this the whole you got your doctorate off of the internet type scenario? I am a doctor! In some dimensions where the term is more usually used. <coughs> but man, in any case, I now shall destroy you with my new interdimensional ultimate skull cane of super awesome! Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, I got a magic wand now. Ain't that cool? I will get you, Foxer Nine-Tailed! The door has been opened! The dimensions will bend! Now, monsters it will send! Well, I doubt that's the last time we'll see him again. In any case, thank you all so much for watching. My name's Foxer Nine-Tailed, again, I'm with Bach. I may do a Dimensional Doors, and this may be segueing into me doing the Dimensional Doors again, and hopefully the first episode being the battle for Muni. Though, a lot of rogue elements are in the mix for that bit, but you get the drift. But either way, hopefully you enjoyed this review. Hopefully y'all stuck around to the end of this. And I really like this dress. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for watching. Whichever videos I've done, links are on my face. So your buttons over there somewhere. Just thank you so much for watching. Hopefully y'all will enjoy this. And hopefully enjoy a new way of my reviews. Hopefully. I kind of want to add some his ass into this stuff, I guess. You know, like, give us some water, show the videos, and we will see you later.